We are from ME481 Design Group 19. We are working with Consumers Energy, uh, Stephanie here in the front, and then our faculty advisor, Abraham. And we were working on the gas leak detection uh, system, the control panel design, essentially building a tablet and phone mount, which you can see in the vehicle over there, and with a Wi-Fi indicator light. By the way, I'm Quentin. Hello, Rob. I'm Jared. I'm Justin. Adam. I'm Garrett. So this is the current, or this was the, uh, the original mount that was in place in the vehicle, and it held a, uh, th th this just held the tablet, and then there was a phone mount elsewhere. And it, as you can see, it took up a lot of space in the vehicle, and therefore, um, Consumers Energy was looking for a little bit um, more robust design, something that um, had increased stability because this gooseneck design was a little bit just like wobbly on the road when it hit a bump. You guys know Michigan potholes. <laughs> and then the the current system did not have a Wi-Fi indicator light. There's a Wi-Fi router in the back of the vehicle here, and they wanted to have a um, a light to indicate whether the Wi-Fi had gone on or off. And so um, we'll discuss more how we approach that, but that was the needs project. So yeah, we want to create a more stable mount, um, create an LED light that displayed the internet connection, and then also kind of a smaller design, something that was possibly more removable than this, because you had to remove four screws and bolts to be able to take this full mount out. Um, so if the vehicle is going a long distance and they don't necessarily need the mount, then it can be removed. So there's some problems with the power constraints that we have where it has to, the glove box still has to open and we have to size it down. So we make sure that it needed to be still getting the glove box without having to untake out the tail mount every time. Then we also needed to have a light that would light up if it was connected in an internet so they know if their data is transmitting or not. And obviously since it's a seating spillot room, meaning if a passenger for long distance journeys, it would be, the passenger would be quite uncomfortable. So we had to size down a bit. And then most importantly, we had to make sure it wouldn't shake as much when you're traveling. So the person who was looking at the tablet could still see it without having to worry about the hidden potholes and everything on the sheet roads. And uh, another some of our impact on public welfare and sustainability would be driver safety, because we want to make sure that the driver can focus on the road and not spending too much time focusing on the tablet. And the LED would be easy to see for show vision, so they didn't constantly look over and see if the tablet was on. And our new design would thus increase the detection efficiency by allowing the vehicle to help better help protect the environment. So with all that, we had two designs that we were really looking at. Uh, this first one on the left, uh, we chose for a more, more fixed design. The one on the right had a double hinge that allowed us to have a few more degrees of, of motion um, or degrees of freedom. Uh, we eventually went with design two, although both of the designs actually took care of the stability. They took care of the space need. The one on the left actually did not take care of, uh, next slide, uh, it did not take care of uh, that it has to have the degrees of freedom. So the first design was fixed in place, couldn't be moved, couldn't be rotated for the driver to be able to see it properly. The only con for design two is that it had a loss of stability because it had degrees of freedom. Uh, but at the same time, we chose fasteners specifically to make sure that it was a little bit more stable. The next set of the design that we were actually looking at was the, the hinge itself. The first one was just two, two barrels that were able to rotate around um, a pivot point. Uh, the second was, this is one we actually ended up choosing anyway, but um, it was the, like I mentioned, the fasteners with the double hinge. Um, and so yeah, the, the difference between the two would be that the, the first design would be harder to lock, harder to keep in place, and therefore reducing um, its stability and even its mobility at the very end. Um, and the second design actually solved both of those uh, so here's the CAD models for design one. Uh, as you can see, this one was in the preliminary because it wasn't ultimately chosen to uh, be our final model and continued on. But it was kind of fixated on how it would be able to mount up using the three different <clears throat> uh, 
and just set up hinges or yeah, leg points to move it around. And then for design two, we want a more sophisticated clamp system. Now this is where the final design, once we're getting closer towards the end, where we found out that we not only wanted to mount a tablet, we also wanted to mount a phone at the same time, causing us to create the double hinge, or not the double hinge, but also the mount for the phone on the side, as long as the tablet here. So going off of this design, we, oh, that's going wrong way. Going off of this design, <laughs> We actually had a large amount of selections of it to choose from, including the actual uh, tablet mount itself on the left, trying to figure out how to gather the distances, trying to figure it out perfectly so it wouldn't be too large or too small, we're trying to fit what we're trying to hold, like a phone or a tablet. Uh, we got our double hinge, which we had to figure out the different dimensions of. We wanted to do a little bit of an FMG on that, which is kind of stress tested a little bit, and trying to figure it out, make sure it wouldn't fail over time. Ultimately, we figured it wouldn't because it was only holding up a tablet and a phone, so not too much was going on with that. Uh, reasons for choosing Design 2 going along with this is that the rotating sliding shaft that we had was able to eliminate uh, problems with the wiggle of the gooseneck by being able to cut a sturdy 360 degree rotation. So that was a big plus that we liked. And it got removable, tightening effect, more degrees of freedom, and just a simplistic design. And for the clamp, like spring loaded clamp system, lightweight uh, and removable, and fits any tablet or phone. And this is the final care drawing, it kind of shows the inside of the clamp. Where here, there's just a spring going on to complete, like the compress. So as you pull it, the spring gets compressed and it wants to push back, which ultimately adds to uh, how it functions as a clamp. So after our first round of testing, we had all the parts 3D printed and we got it assembled. And uh, after this first round of testing, we found that the, the big modifications that we needed to make was the initial arm was a little bit too long. So when you're sitting in the passenger seat, it was kind of up in your face. It's very hard for the passenger or even the driver to use. So we shortened that arm down, and we didn't have a place to put the Raspberry Pi, which is, uh, holds the code to run the LED to let us know when we're connected to the internet. So we added on a compartment to the side of our initial slider and shortened the arm. Uh, another big design modification that we changed is we opted to use PVC for the pole instead of metal. Uh, we did this because PVC it slides a little bit better with the plastic. We use carpet sliders. Um, it was easier to assemble and the big thing is we have the base bolted down to the, the base that we left in the car, but the PVC actually screws into that. So if it needs to be disassembled, if there's a long car trip that somebody needs to sit in the passenger, passenger seat for a while, that can easily come out. So this is uh, our final design uh, in CAD with all the finished parts. Um, you saw earlier, Garrett was showing the, the inner parts of where the springs are. So that's just our base that we just put screws in to make sure it stays on and the spring stays in place. Uh, and lastly, the last modification that we made was we put two uh, aluminum cylinders in the double hinge. Uh, we wanted to do this because when you're driving over Michigan roads, you really need to make sure that those hinges are tight so it's not going to move. But the hinge itself is made out of plastic, so if there's too much force, it could cause the plastic to break. So adding these two aluminum pipes in there, make sure you can make it as tight as you want without cracking the plastic pieces. Yeah, and finally, so as you guys know, we want to check if we're connected to the internet because that's how they upload data. So everything that gets connected back here has to be sent somewhere else. Um, and the driver has to be able to know at all times, are we sending, are we uploading this data or not? Um, so that was the biggest thing. And in the past, they would have to look at the iPad, get their eyes off the road and stuff. So um, adding an LED, as you guys can see right there, a green LED. Uh, allows them to know if they're connected or not. Um, the way we did this was by the use of a Raspberry Pi, as you guys can see right here. Um, that's basically a tiny computer, so the way it works is you can use Python, you can use programming languages pretty much, and you start adding nodes. Um, the way we broke this down was three basic steps. First of all, we had to be able to implement an LED, uh, an LED as you guys can see. Um, in order to do so, we need to have a circuit connected to it. We had to add a resistor to make sure the LED would not break. Um, obviously, the Raspberry Pi on that image, as you guys can see, the left one, 
um, is providing the power with the red wire and is also connecting to ground uh, to complete the circuit. So that was the first step. How are we gonna get this done? We have the resistor, we started messing with the breadboard, the breadboard. It's gonna be this one right here, which allows crazy connections and to try to things a little bit easier. And what we have to finally decide, we moved over to the front board, which is actually smaller and it's easier to uh, connect things and if it's permanent, that's the way to go. So that's what we does. Step number one. Step number two was how do we check if we're connected to the white wire. The way we did this is by connecting to the modem back here using an Ethernet cable, um, and we connected that into the Raspberry Pi. And we added some code to say, okay, let's check to see if we're connected or not. The way we did that is by using a function called ping. The way you do it, you ping Google, you, you ping different websites, and you get a response. Then uh, the code would analyze that response, and if it was possible that we're connected, uh, it would tell the LED to turn on. And we keep checking this every 10 seconds, so the driver uh, is updated at all times of what's going on with the server, that do they have to stop and see what's going on, or can they keep collecting data pretty much. Um, and finally, since we're not going to have an interface, just going to be plugged in, and you want um, the Raspberry Pi to work whenever the car is on. So we have to add that to the starting procedure. As soon as the Raspberry Pi has power, the thing turns on, and we start running the car. Um, and we added a while loop, so we keep checking as long as the car is on. Uh, that's basically the principle of the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, we put some house in, and we have the LED up here, just so it's easy for the driver. It's not facing him straight into his eyes, so at night and stuff, it could be challenging to have a light inside your car, so we decided to make it face up. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much. And now we want to invite you guys to check it out. It's interesting to see how it looks. There it is. Yeah. But yeah, so you guys can see it's a little bit more sturdy on the previous stuff.